I have I know what I need to do but doing it is hard you just do it anyway little trick called do it anyway um, a lot of things we need to do are hard but they're so rewarding when we do them so you just do it you push through and you do it anyway <coughs> hello Emily licky dog hello Hi, Badaso. Hello, Gwen. Hello, my loves. How is tonight going? My boyfriend likes to be friends with his exes. I don't like it. What do you think about it? All in the behavior. Are they flirting? Hi from Texas. Hi, I love your advice. Thank you. It's all in the behavior. Are they flirting or not? That's where it matters. I feel like when I'm insecure, I try to do stuff to stop being insecure. It flies out the window. It's one of my specialties, working with people who are overthinking, insecure, jealous. Um, if you want to overcome that, I do have a No More Insecurity program. You can find the link to that in the link tree in my bio. Ooh, I have a job interview Monday for dog training apprenticeship position. Super nervous. Love it. Oh, it's actually Rob. Okay, Rob. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I used to be a dog trainer before I was a people trainer. Behavior modification specialist. Speaking of which, look what we got. Look what we got. Oh, hello. Oh, he knows. He knows. Hi. Hi. So cute. Oh, he didn't like that. He knows if he comes here. If he comes here, hello, Charlie. Oh, my good boy. And he's just, he's just going to lay there. He's so cozy. <laughs> how to deal with a prideful boyfriend. Depends how that behavior is showing up. Uh, two more days until fix that shit and custom mid. Ooh. I'm excited for you. Which one are you gonna read first? Uh, I, you know, yeah. It depends how pride shows up. How do you incorporate loviness back into the relationship after kind of neglecting that? Go for two kisses a day. Two kisses, minimum of five seconds each. So if you don't know when to do those two two kisses, uh, the hello and the goodbye. Hello, Charlie. Always get those two kisses in. Guy dating is so fearful of disappointing people, he runs away at any sign of affection. Massive red flag, my love. Uh, massive red flag. Massive red flag. I, t I keep taking her back. How do I know when to leave? Like, when is enough? When you are indifferent, if she is abusive, <clears throat> hello hello love I tell him how I like to be loved and he feels like I'm being controlling so he doesn't do it uh, so you know surface level right just going by what you say it sounds like this is somebody who just doesn't care right doesn't care doesn't care to be loving doesn't care to show you love um, uh, really would rather be dismissive, abusive, uncaring, right? So if you don't want that in a partner, uh, that's not the right relationship to be in. But I don't know the history of this. I don't know what led to this. Um, I don't know what the other side of the coin is. So if you wanted me to actually give you advice based on information, that would require a coaching session. <coughs> My wife leaves soon for five months. I'm terrified. So I have a long distance relationship guide that's free in the link to my bio. You can just go into that, scroll down a little bit. You're gonna find it. there's a free book button. There's a free long distance guide button. So um, download it, 
so that so that you understand how you guys can maintain closeness and resolve conflict over long distance how do i get over my fear of being in a relationship knowledge is power knowledge is power knowledge is very soothing my fear of being in a relationship knowledge is power knowledge is power knowledge is very slicked over long distance relationship knowledge is power knowledge is power knowledge is very soothing my fear of being in a relationship knowledge is power knowledge is power knowledge is very soothing no more assholes and become knowledgeable on what it is that you should look for how you can date in a safe and effective way I, I, um, I uh, teach you how to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. I teach you the 12 character traits you need to look for. Um, they need to be at least a 9 out of 12. Using a no kissing for three months dating rule is actually going to help you have time and space to properly assess people. You're also not going to waste time by committing to someone you don't know. So if you're scared of dating, get no more assholes. It's really going to teach you how to date with confidence. I, I set you up with the right mindset, which is uh, confident. I help you build up your self-esteem more because like attracts like. If, you're, if you lower yourself down here, if, if, if people have stepped on you and lowered you and you stay down here, you're always going to find those same kinds of people. So if you do what's a no more assholes, you're going to elevate, which means you're going to find somebody up here. The kind of people who don't step on others to elevate themselves. Yes, I love you too, my loves. <clears throat> Going through a breakup because one person was putting more effort than the other and both agree. I need that book. Yes, it's here for you. Hello from Jamaica. Uh, so your insecurity program, you only had six sessions for that. It the I thought it was more than that. Uh, I thought it was more than that. Where if it doesn't share much about his life is private, do I give him the same treatment? Um, so absolutely, right? Like absolutely. Here's the thing: you might actually find some freedom in that. Uh, so first of all. I wouldn't date somebody who has a private life. Um, my husband didn't share every little detail of his day, but it's not because he had a private life, right? A life that he wasn't telling me about because it's private. So don't be with somebody who has a private life. Um, it's okay to be with somebody who doesn't feel the need to disclose every little detail of what they do, where they go, who they talk to, what they said, right? that's okay because we're not parenting each other so we don't need to grill each other we need to choose partners who are trustworthy but somebody who has a private life in other words a secret life uh is in other words a secret life in other words a secret life uh is not the kind of person you want to get into a relationship with Ultimately, this is the kind of person that you realize, oh, their private life includes another girlfriend, maybe a wife and kid, right? So don't date private people. Um, it's, it's okay to, you know, let's say you get into a relationship, you're the kind of person who discloses everything because you want to know everything. Um, if that was what was happening, then yes, do become more like him because that's what I did. And ultimately I found there was a lot of freedom in not regurgitating every single thing I did. Uh, and, and I, I just felt much more confident in my relationship. So there's, there's two ways that this could be happening, but if it's private, dump him. If it's just that, you know, look, when I'm with you, I just don't feel like going back into everything I've done so that I can recount everything I've done so that you feel like you know everything I've done, right? That's parenting. Um, so it's okay to not parent, but don't get in a relationship with somebody who's being private. <clears throat> Makes sense. My boyfriend and I talked about reading a couple book. Do you suggest fix, fix that shit? Yes. For couples, I do suggest fix that shit. Um, just so y'all know, my dogs are chewing on bones right now. So where do you get the book? Uh, if you want to get Fix That Shit, you can get that on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. I do have a free book that you can download and a free, um, you know, there's a free meditation guide in the meditation resource section. 
Uh, there is a free long distance relationship manual. You're going to see that under the free book button. So lots of really good stuff for you guys in the link tree in my bio. What do you do if you never backs his words with actions? Call it quits. 100% yes. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who is inconsistent. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who lacks integrity. Um, just don't. Bad idea. You can't build a life with that kind of person. You can't build a life on broken promises, right? Build a life with somebody who is a long-term thinker and planner and follows through on the things that they build up and dream in their mind. They, they, they come up with an idea, something, a vision, and they put it to work. Sorry, that was bugging me. Uh, what book should I, read, should I read first? Custom made or fix that shit? I think you can read both at the same time because uh, custom made is a workbook. So every chapter ends with exercises. I get you thinking about something and then really thinking about it because this is how we're going to pull out what your talent is. So I think you can read a chapter or two or three in custom made. And, and do that work and then, you know, later on or af right after, do a few chapters and fix that shit. And do you have a daughter? I'd love to meet a girl raised by you. So I just published a book for men, a dating book for men. It's called The Perfect Play. Do you want to see the cover? Who wants to see the cover for my latest book? Who wants to see the cover for the book I just wrote for men? Can we see your dog? Um, well, there's, oh, there's Maggie. <laughs> and there's Charlie. Oh, my babies. My babies. Who wants to see the cover for uh, the perfect play? Let's see. I do. Uh, I do. Yes, mine just arrived. Oh, the perfect play. You're reading it. So mad. I love it. Da, 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 da. It's actually blue. I don't, I don't know why it shows up green. If I do this, there, you get a better idea. But yeah, it's actually blue. Uh, Maggie and Charlie. Yes, you're so welcome, Maggie. <laughs> Um, is there anybody here who's read this book? I know a few of you guys have ordered this now. So that's, that is the book for men on how to find a woman like me. I should get my boyfriend that book. Uh, so I, I'm curious. I'm curious. Uh, I love it. I'm curious to know who has read this book yet. If anybody, um, I know I just released it and my, I know some people have ordered it. I just don't know if, if they've gotten their copy yet. Um, I should get my boyfriend that book. I do certainly talk about what women appreciate from men. When she tells you all his violent controlling behavior, but when you're there, she's affectionate. Uh, I don't get it. Oh, is that your link for the blue block? Cute glasses. Yes, some dilly. My boyfriend doesn't deal with his stress well. If he has work issues, he, he acts so mean towards me. You're gonna have a boundary, my love. You're going to have a boundary. I already have a few of your books. I love it. Uh, what's a great book to read about relationship advice? Uh, oh God, don't do that, Carlos. Don't, not here. Love it. Um. Can women read Perfect Play too? They can, but if they've read No More Assholes, I don't know what more they would learn. <clears throat> A mutual friend asked too much about my relationship with my boyfriend, so you don't need to say anything you don't want to say. I'll read it soon so my future man can learn about it through osmosis. Uh, 
is there such a thing as couples therapy during the dating stage? Um, you, you could, like, if you guys wanted to accelerate your learning of each other, you can come get a coaching session with me. So, um, earlier on, the question about a uh, boyfriend who doesn't handle work stress well and takes it out on you, um, you, this is your script, okay? This is what you're going to say. I need you to understand that I won't be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't, who, who doesn't manage their emotions and their behaviors. You need to learn how to deal with stress better. You need to start meditating, which is going to shrink your amygdala, which is a part of your brain that produces stress, fear, and anxiety. Meditation shrinks that part of your brain. Here's some tracks that you can use. Here's the meditation resource button on Canada's dating coach uh, link tree in her bio so that you can gain an understanding what it is or go get a coaching session with her so she can teach you how to start meditating. But you need to do something to reduce your stress because you coming home and letting it out on me is not working for me. And I will not stay in a relationship with somebody who doesn't manage their emotions and their behaviors, but instead uses me as a lightning rod. <clears throat> What do you do when you have two different communication styles? You translate. Uh, get fixed that shit. We do have two different communication styles, by the way. Men and women are very different. Um, so get fixed that shit so that you can understand how to deal with your anxiety. And you can also understand how to communicate with your partner in a way that doesn't create conflict and defensiveness. Boyfriend of three years says he loves me but is not attracted to me. Tips on how to respond to that? Uh, well, first of all, you don't need to jump straight to responding to it. You get to think about it. So what do you want? What do you want? Do you want to be in a relationship with somebody who loves you but is not attracted to you? Or do you want to be in a relationship who with somebody who loves you and is attracted to you? So... Um, if your answer is I want to be in a relationship with somebody who loves me and is attracted to me, then you can ask your partner, is there something I could do that would help you be more attracted to me? Or you can say, I don't want to be with somebody who simply loves me but is not also attracted to me. This is the wrong relationship for me. I'm going to get into a relationship with somebody who is attracted to who I am on every level. Completely your choice, my love. You should collab with an LGBTQ relationship coach and co-author a book. Yes, yes. Yes. At what point do my standards for guys become too picky? How do I balance compromise and standards? Uh, so this is a very long answer based on who you are, right? This is individualistic. Um, so if you really want to understand how to define your next relationship, I would suggest you get a coaching session so that we can come up with your definition because not everybody has the same definition. Why say you want a good man and make every effort to be with somebody you know is toxic? Because we seek what's familiar even if it's wrong for us. We are creatures designed to avoid pain and seek pleasure. Um, we have a mechanism in us that also wants what is familiar and takes comfort in familiarity. This is now a glitch. Back in caveman days, this is what kept us alive because familiar territory meant I know where the predators are and I know where the food sources are so I don't get eaten and I don't starve. But that function in our brain is now a glitch because we no longer need to use it against predators and for food sources, but we are still using it. And so if we were raised in a toxic home environment, then we seek the familiar because the familiar feels comfortable. I did it myself. My mom was abusive. I got myself an abusive boyfriend. It's not what I set out to do. That's not what I wanted. But I was seeking the familiar even if it was wrong for me because I still have parts of my brain that are in the jungle. And since I wasn't assessing things properly, I was simply reacting to my biological body's emotional impulses based on old, old, old survival instincts, 
um, I was putting myself in situations that weren't right just because they felt comfortable. So that is why people will continue a pattern of getting into toxic relationships even though their mouths say, I don't want to do that anymore. They're not understanding that we are three parts, the biological body, the logical mind, your spiritual connections. Your biological body is going to drive you in certain directions, but if you don't rise up into your logical mind and say, yeah, okay, sure, but what do I actually need? What should I actually do? Then you keep repeating the same patterns based on your biological impulses. I feel like on the toxic one in a relationship, do you have a book you recommend? Yes, my love, fix that shit. 100% fix that shit. By the way, it is now an audio book. So if you guys want an audio book, I narrate it. You can only find it through the link to my bio. It is not on audible because audible wants 70 percent and that is just um pimp money and i don't do that cognitive fluency we finally broke up but how do i stop myself from thinking about who he's sleeping with get no more assholes get no more assholes and start directing your thoughts into being functional and finding your next partner using the no kissing for three months dating rule and making sure that you define your next relationship before you fall into a relationship. Because when you properly define your next relationship, you understand who is right for you and who isn't. If you just go out there saying, I'll know it when I find it, that's called confusion. And like attracts like, so you're gonna attract a confused partner. And then both you're gonna be confused about whether or not you're in the right relationship. Uh, I see you sparkling for another new book to write. Uh, I gotta write Fix That Shift for Men. I gotta write Mama Why You Gotta Be So Prickly. Uh, do we post you guys? I see there's a bunch of stuff that went by. And I am doing a rife machine tonight. Guys, the number to remember is 16. If I ask you what's the number, tell me 16. Uh, a what machine? A what, what, what? It's a rife machine. It's a machine that emits frequencies. Um, so I am doing a 30 to 1 hertz. So 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Uh, going all the way down to 1. And uh, basically just readjusting my frequency. It's kind of like, uh, you know how women will like cycle together um so the rife machine emits frequencies so that you start uh cycling at the frequencies that it's emitting so finally broke up how do i stop myself from thinking about who he's sleeping with you get no more assholes and start planning your future by following the steps in this book If the ex asks for another chance after cheating, should you expect them to be loyal during the talking stage? Nope, not at all. Uh, if you're going to take somebody back after they cheated on you, I highly suggest you get a coaching session before you do that so that uh, I can help you assess whether or not you should, what the parameters should be for you taking them back, how you should be navigating if you do take them back. I broke up with my toxic boyfriend yesterday. It's only been a day and I feel so much better. Amazing. That's the freedom bell. Good, good, good. Sky, good stuff. Boyfriend's friends have a reputation of being rude. Is this red flag since he hangs out with them? 
We are uh, certainly uh, the product of the five people we associate with, we surround ourselves with. These are his people. Got to ask yourself why, you know, why does he feel connected to them? Why does he feel like he has so much in common with them, right? Uh, Fix That Shit is on Amazon, but the audiobook is only through the link tree in my bio. Guys, who are we? Um... Okay, got it. Got it. I saw I saw the one. I saw the one. I, uh, you should create a podcast. I did. I did. The link to the podcast is in the link tree in my bio. Help yourself to that. Uh, also, there's a link to my YouTube channel on my in the link to my bio. Should I buy Dating 101? I've been on dates before, but haven't been in a relationship yet. So Dating 101 is very educational, but I for you, I actually did write a book. It's called The Perfect Play. It is the first button in the link tree in my bio if you want to grab it. This is a dating book for men. I do prepare you. That's the cover. Uh, I prepare you to date. So even if you've never dated before, this is your manual on who you need to be and how you need to date. Um, I, I am listening to binaural beats. So you, my friend, if you're looking for a dating book to help you get started on dating and you've never dated before, The Perfect Play is the one for you to get. So go to my bio, click on that link tree, click that first button and go get yourself a copy of that one. How can I find other successful females to be friends with? Uh, if you are a female, you can go on Bumble. We we now have like Bumble friends, right? For women to become friends with each other. Ring the bell. Do, do, do. Dating's hard. How do I learn not to take it personally if someone doesn't choose me? Um, to not take it personally when somebody doesn't choose me. So it's all about the law of averages. Um, it, it, you have to not care what people think in general, period. Now, I used to be a stripper and the best way to make money was to go up to people and say, would you like a dance? Now, there's a lot of no's when you do that. There are a lot of no's. And this is what I said to myself. There's there's a yes in there somewhere. Like think of like a bag full of marbles, right? A bag or a bowl full of marbles. Let's do a bag, right? Bag full of marbles. And there is like a hundred purple marbles and one green marble. So you're gonna reach into the bag, you're gonna grab a mar marble, you're gonna pull it out, and then you're gonna look at it. So that moment of reveal is when, you know, it's is this a green one or is this a purple one? Is this the one that accepts me and I accept them or not, right? So you're blindly reaching into the bag and doing this over and over again. That's what you need to say to yourself. You're gonna get through the no's to get to the yes. This is not a rejection of you. This is simply a mismatch. You keep mismatching, that's it. But there's no other way to get to that green marble except to keep reaching into the bag and seeing what you got. So you have to do the law of averages. I don't know when you're gonna hit that green marble. You don't know when you're gonna hit that green marble. But if you give up and tell yourself this is too hard, if you go into this in a poopy attitude because it's too hard and oh, she's probably gonna reject me anyways, then you're just not gonna to get to that green marble. So you have to release the outcome, release the expectation. Just because you showed up doesn't mean this is the one that's going to pan out. You have to keep putting yourself out there and give it the chance. Give yourself the opportunity and see every encounter as a learning opportunity and get that book that I wrote for men, the dating book for men, the perfect play. Um, first button in the link tree in my bio. 
I wrote this one to help you date. We didn't agree on what talking meant. He thought talk to other people. I thought loyalty until we die. Uh, my love, talking doesn't mean kissing and having sex. So of course you shouldn't be expecting loyalty until you die because you're not kissing and having sex. Talking should actually mean talking. And this is where you observe. What are they doing while we are getting to know each other? Is he taking the time to learn more about me? Is he making the effort to show up for me and show me who he is? If not, then don't kiss him, right? But you need to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. This is why you got disappointed because you didn't use the no kissing for three months dating rule and simply observe his behavior during those three months. If you'd used a no kissing for three months dating rule and saw that he was talking to other people, you would have said to yourself, I don't wanna get in a relationship with somebody who's fractured, who's interested in other people. I want to be in the relationship with somebody who goes, ooh, you, <laughs> well, there's something about you. Like I just don't even see other people anymore because there's something about you. I want a relationship and I'm striving for you. That's the one you want to kiss eventually. But if you're kissing and having sex during the talking stage, you're not talking. You're kissing and having sex. Your mouth is occupied. How do I, so my, what, get no more assholes so that you don't end up in this situation again where there's this miscommunication, right? You set the tone, you set the pace, you communicate. I'm not attached to anybody until I've gotten to know them for at least three months. And I'm going to choose the person I commit to. So there's clarity in the understanding that the kiss creates a loyal and devoted commitment with somebody that you have everything you need to have in common with. Your life goals are lined up. Your timelines are lined up. You can accept each other's differences. And by the way, your lives, your lives not being shown on my TikTok is strange. I didn't know you were on. Oh, you got all your notifications turned on. Uh, how do I deal with my boyfriend's ex friends with benefit girl still around his group of friends? Um, if you had a problem with that, this shouldn't have been somebody you got into a relationship with. So this is the situation you walked into. Um, so what you're saying is how do I reduce my anxiety and feel more secure about my relationship? If this is a trustworthy person and you're having difficulty with that, I do have a no more insecurity program. You can also get me on a session if you wanted me to just do an assessment see if this is worth working on yourself sometimes we get into a relationship and we say you know what i need to change i need to work on myself i need to be better well it turns out you chose somebody who's not trustworthy uh so it's not you it's the situation that's triggering you not your imagination so if your imagination is triggering you come get my no more insecurity program if uh, you don't know, just get a session so that I can do an assessment. Um, if you didn't choose somebody trustworthy, you can always level up. Is being a good conversationalist a fundamental value that it should be firm for a partner? If this is a fundamental value for you, right? I don't need my husband to be a good conversationalist because, you know, although he is right um he he's very intelligent like i want to be with somebody who learns and talks about interesting things that he learns uh does my husband sometimes talk too long about stuff that he learns sure but i love him i love the fact that he fills his mind um so it's up to you, right? Like, I want to be with somebody who's intelligent and, um, you know, is, is interesting to talk to and, um, you know, answer, answer questions, even if it's just a one word answer, which by the way, one word answers can be very communicative. Just grab a dictionary and look up that word and you'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, my husband said good in response to something one time and I looked up good. Good is really good. Uh, we tend to underestimate the power of words. Don't do that. So, you know, being a good, good conversation is a fundamental value. I, I don't want to be with somebody who's stupid. I don't want to be with somebody who can't string three sentences together. So, 
Absolutely, yeah, I would say so. So the No More Insecurity program. So basically, um, if like overthinking, insecurity, jealousy, uh, these fear, right? Uh, this is your brain affecting your body, giving you reactions, and you have impulses to do certain behaviors. If you are feeling this way uh, with somebody who is trustworthy, this is really difficult because you are basically having a negative impact on the relationship so when we reverse engineer that we you know basically removing the behaviors removing the reactions that make you want to do the behaviors going backwards and that removing the thoughts that are causing these reactions that are making you want to do these behaviors so reverse engineering what's happening means we have to change how you think so we can change your emotions, so we can change the behaviors that you feel compelled to do. So this is what I teach you how to do in the No More Insecurity program, wrapping this around the particular things that are going on in your relationship, your particular triggers, your particular moments. So it's, it's very educational, but very strong in the tools and very, very much oriented to what is happening inside your own life and relationship. By the way, speaking of the No More Insecurity program, uh, I just did a sixth session with somebody. Um, so she, she did her last session today, which is the 27th. Uh, her session, her fifth one was <clears throat> on May 4th. She was spacing them out a week apart, a week, sometimes two weeks apart. Her last one was on the 4th and this one was on the 27th. When I told her how long it had been since her last session, she was shocked because the time had gone by so quickly. And part of the reason why the time had gone by so quickly is because there hadn't been a single fight with her boyfriend during that time. Um, she is feeling now secure, confident. Um, she went from like, you know, basically her, her, in terms of like how the relationship was going, uh, you know, he said, I don't think we're going to be moving in together. Like, I just don't think we're going to make it. Your insecurity is too much. So that's where they were when we started. He was here and she was behind him in terms of growth and evolution. And what she did is she surpassed him in growth and evolution and then had a talk with him about boundaries so that he could start catching up with her. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how well she's done. Interesting. It's, I, I mean, I'm not sure if interesting is, is quite the word because this is the thing about the stuff that I teach. If you follow the directions, if you follow what I teach you, your progression is, is fast, basically. Um, so she has been working with me. Her first session was the beginning of April, like around April 1st. Mm. Two months. Two months. And she feels secure and confident and their relationship is back on track. They are now planning on moving in together again. How do you tell the difference between intuition versus fear in a relationship? If you're not meditating, your amygdala is oversized. So it's hard to tell because your amygdala is sending out distress signals that are unrelated to anything. Because if you are used to being distressed, if, if anxiety and fear keep hitting you, fear, anxiety, fear, anxiety, it's like a muscle. When you go to the gym and you lift weights and you pump your muscles, your muscles continue to burn calories after your gym session. So if you are always having fearful and anxious thoughts, your amygdala will have an automatic fearful and anxious thought. So you need to shrink your amygdala down through meditation in order to better assess the difference between intuition and and just a natural, auto, uh, well, natural. It's not natural, because it's not natural for amygdalas to be over enlarged and overactive. Um, but if you, if you shrink your amygdala down, you'll be better able to tell the difference between reality 
and perception. Ooh, started meditating today. Ooh, just got to that part and come back clean. I love it. Love it. Do some cleaning up. Uh, I am spiritual, so I believe in meditation. So, like, my religion basically is science, but the, 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 like, science is actually very spiritual. We love our meditators. What can I do as a guy dating long distance? Uh, someone likes to have my partner close to me. So I do have a long distance relationship guide in the link tree in my bio. It's free, it's a free download. So go ahead and grab that. How important is it to know all the details of spouse's infidelity? He just wants to sweep it under the rug. Uh, how, here's the thing. It may be important to you and you, it may be important to your healing or it may not be. You might, um, get some details that you don't like and they just cause you more pain. There is a saying, what you don't know won't hurt you. There is some truth to that. So beware of wanting all the details. Um, if you guys are actually trying to heal and mend this relationship, Sometimes the more details you get, the longer it takes to heal, the harder it is to mend. So, up to you. <clears throat> Love that. You're the first person who's framed meditation in a way that makes sense, but where do I start? the meditation resource button in the link tree in my bio. Do you have a book that covers what to do when you start reacting to conflict by shutting off emotions? Yes, my love, fix that shit. Fix that shit. This is the functional guide to uh, getting through conflict in your relationship. Tips for not getting manipulated into going back to a hurtful relationship, block. All right, block, cut off communication. I don't want to talk to you. Stop calling me, stop texting me. Uh, if that's not enough for you, by the way, come get a coaching session. Is needing space and having doubts normal in a relationship? Um, it can be, it can be, especially if you didn't properly assess the person you got into a relationship with if you didn't take the time to really get to know them before you got into a relationship. Which one is the link about long distance relationships? It's below the free book button. If you have a hard time trusting somebody who's actually trustworthy, come take the No More Insecurity program. If you guys uh, do want to sign up for that No More Insecurity program, the button to that is in the link tree in my bio. You're so welcome. Can your new book apply to non-straight men? Mm. That's good. Uh, I think like 95% of it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is it is gendered just so you know it is gendered but uh, I, I think there's still a lot to learn in that a lot to learn in that hello from Bulgaria guys don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I do a coaching giveaway every month I see people getting freebies uh, what makes someone trustworthy? They have integrity. They are loyal. They are devoted. They are consistent. If you don't know if your partner is trustworthy or not, that's a huge red flag. Would you say compatibility is more important than chemistry? I think both are very important. Um, very important. So I actually... Um, 
I, I think compatibility should come before chemistry, but not at the expense of chemistry. Uh, I, that was my first marriage, by the way. Um, my, my first husband and I, we certainly were compatible um, on a lot of levels, but not on the physical level. We did not have any intimacy whatsoever, and that was the demise of our marriage. So don't take compatibility at the expense of intimacy. You don't need to sacrifice. With my husband, I got to know him. I really liked him. Um, I became very fond of him. And, and you know, then the chemistry set in. You know, it's just a little bit over time, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I really became more and more attracted to him. So that chemistry definitely built up. That's what I call the slow burn. I love your content. I just wish I knew all this before I started dating my husband. Oh, no. Um, if uh if you want to find out how to make your relationship better maybe come get a coaching session second chances it depends that's fine thank you you're welcome i get a lot of people who say i wish i knew you 20 years ago and i'm like i wish i knew me 20 years ago what should you do if you're a, if you're SA? Is that what's SA? Wants to do something like get a bad tattoo or cut their weird hair, uh, cut their hair weird. Um, so do you mean significant other? Um, so listen, I'm I'm not my husband's mom. If my husband decides he wants to get a bad tattoo, if he decides he wants to buy a crotch rocket motorcycle. If he decides he wants to shave his head or grow his hair long, I'm not his mom at the end of the day. Um, I do have a certain say over what he eats, but I have a say over what he eats because he gives me that. So he gets to do what he wants to do. He's a big boy, he's an adult. I might say, ooh, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, if he get, you know, I might say, you're, uh, I, I, I'm, I don't like that, or I like it better this way. I could say that. I can certainly, you know, speak my mind. But at the end of the day, he's a big boy who gets to do what he wants to do. My ex called last week at 2 a.m. Should I return the call? I don't know why you haven't blocked your ex. Um, don't know why you haven't, why you let them interrupt you. Uh, I don't know what kind of relationship that was. I don't know if they were abusive. I don't know what the behavior was in the relationship. I don't know if you should return the call. If you want me to give you an answer on that, uh, you could get a coaching session and I could get all the details I need to get in order to give you an educated answer on your particular situation. Right person, wrong time, that can happen. I love your earrings. Thank you. Thank you. I like them too. Everything is possible, you guys. Everything is possible. Oh, 16. is my next number hello I appreciate your mind you give me faith in humanity thank you you're so welcome my ex always texts me to tell me how guilty he feels about leaving I blocked him but I feel bad so just know that you know guilt is a very natural human emotion it comes with the human body guilt is the emotion that ensures survival of the species so just because you have a guilty feeling doesn't mean you need to behave in any particular way. This is you rising above your biological body's impulses and going, okay, but logically, uh, what is the right answer? 
So every time you feel bad, go into the logic of it instead of being in the emotion. Your emotions, it's your emotions are like a fart, you guys. It's it's just something your body does, okay? So it you don't need to give it a whole bunch of meaning every single time you have an emotion. Sometimes your body is just farting an emotion. Um, so you, you know, you, you, you kick somebody out of your life because they weren't right for you. Well, there's a biological part of your brain that says, no, we need every single person in our tribe. You don't kick people out their strength in numbers. So, you know, there's, there's an ancient part of your brain that says, I kick this person out of my tribe. They might not survive. I feel bad about that. Um, or I kick somebody out of my tribe and that makes me feel distressed because now there's one less person in my tribe and there's strength in numbers. So, so you're having a feeling about it. So what, what is the logic? This person wasn't right for me. We were not compatible. They were disrespectful. They were inconsistent in their behaviors. They were lazy, right? Why, why are you, should you no longer be with them? Rise from your biological body, go up into your logic. And, and stop thinking your emotions should drive your behaviors because they, they shouldn't, not your emotions. Your mind should drive your behaviors. Your logic should drive your behaviors, not the, the sensations that are produced in your body just because you're a biological creature designed to survive. He said he wants to be with you, but doesn't know what to do about it. So say, okay, well, let me know when you figure it out. I really want to quit my job, but we're terribly understaffed and I feel guilty. Um, so here's the thing. Whose responsibility is it to ensure that this company is running well? Is it yours or is it the people above you? Are you being paid enough to ensure this organization is being run well? If the answer is no, um, are you selling your sanity, right? Are you selling your sanity for, for that paycheck that you get? Or is it, is it worth what you are going through if the answer is no? then take responsibility for your life, right? Just Sometimes you gotta do things that other people may not like, but you are the only person living your life. You need to make your decisions. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Who wants a notification when I go live? Nope. Why do I not want to date anymore after being with a, a narc? Um, maybe you just need a break, which is totally fine. Totally fine to take a break. Make sure you pick up a copy of No More Assholes before you start dating again because you have to make sure you don't end up in a situation like that again. Best place to meet people, honestly, online. Online, lots of people. I met my girlfriend's new friend and I really like her. Her friend was way too friendly with me, what do I do? Just be civil, but you don't need to reciprocate the too friendly um so guys those of you who want a notification when i go live click my picture up here once or twice you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell click on the bell when you do that say i just did what does it mean when he says he wants to take it slow this is perfect um how do i purchase your book go you can get like if you want kindle like ebook or paperback go to amazon um, if you want the audiobook for Fix That Shit, you can only get that through the link tree in my bio. Uh, so what does it mean when he says he wants to take it slow? No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. Grab no more assholes. Say, absolutely. I love this idea. We should take it slow because, you know, 
I'm looking for a committed long-term relationship. I need to know who somebody is before I commit to them, before I get into a relationship with them. So I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure that when I commit to somebody is because I know them well enough to know that we are a good fit for a committed long-term relationship. Do you have any tips for turning off the emotion and turning on the logic or you just ignore it? No, um, absolutely. That's exactly what I teach you how to do. So you need to deal with your system, your biological system that produces the emotions, which means you need to start meditating because it shrinks your amygdala, which is stress, fear, and anxiety. So get to work right away reducing those negative emotions. If you're single, dive into no more assholes. If you're in a relationship, dive in to fix that shit because that's exactly what I teach you how to do, how to manage your emotions and become more logical. Yeah, no need to, getting your book, so awesome. I like it. Done, I just did, I love it. Guys, look at this. Look at this, we got a snuggle bus. Charlie, are you getting a haircut on Monday? Take in the fluffiness, you guys. Charlie will be naked come Monday. I'm getting him shaved. All shaved. All gone. Laura followed the host. Thank you. You need to bypass the limbic system through meditation. Absolutely. I'm in love with my married neighbor's husband. Not a homewrecker, but it's really hard. Don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop talking to them stop talking to them if you need to but uh don't create that karma in your life all my people who just joined thank you should i allow my ex to take me out on dates to rekindle us while he's fixing his shit or wait until he's made changes um so uh, no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. If you want to let him take you on dates, right? No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. For three months. Three months. I don't think the three month rule is good because that's what guys know all girls do. I don't get it. Uh, Sarah, come have a conversation with me. Sarah, you want to come live with me? You want to come talk about why you don't think the no kissing for three months dating rule is good? Sarah, thank you. I'm single, but I bought fix that shit. Michelle, amazing. Love it. Sarah, I just opened up my um, ability to come live with me. Um, I want to know why you think the no kissing for three months rule isn't good. Boyfriend of six months. Hello, Jess. Boyfriend of six months going through personal stress, pulling away suddenly, I would get uh, fix that shit. How to forgive when partner shows a little remorse? Why forgive? Right? Like, do you, right? Uh, you betrayed the relationship. You betrayed me. Um, you're not remorseful, which means you really just don't care. So why would you be in a relationship with somebody you feel needs to be remorseful but you want to stay with them? I don't understand what this dynamic is. Um, if you want me to understand that and give you some direction with that, that would be a coaching session. Uh, because when I had conversations with men, they say they expect that because they know that's a rule that women have. So do you want to come live with me, love? I can't do a conversation like this. Can you tell us more about custom made? So this is the book that helps you uncover what your purpose and your passion is. What is it that you're designed to do? Um, so we all have something that we're very naturally good at. We all have talent somewhere, but we went through an educational system that said, oh, you know that thing you're good at? Don't worry about it. But you're getting D's and E's and C's in this. So you got to focus more on these subjects, put a lot more effort and energy into this subject. So you've been taught in your educational system to pull away from what you're naturally good at and focus more on what you're not good at. So some of us forgot what our talents are by doing this. 
uh, and we all need to exercise our purpose. Our purpose would usually be exercised into our talent, but if you don't know what your talent is, then you take that purposeful energy and you apply it to your partner. You make your partner your purpose. This is where codependency comes from. My emotional well-being lies in your hands and how much you communicate with me in the fact that you give me every single spare moment of your time. You need to redirect to your talent. Your partner is the icing on your cake. Your purpose is your cake. So if you don't know what your purpose is, then get custom made. I answer two questions. What is my talent? How can I monetize it? So I get paid doing what I love. Sarah, come have a conversation with me or get no more assholes. Hope everyone's having a good Thursday. Just found out that a guy I'm talking to has a girl best friend. I see that as a red flag. So you, you know, hopefully when you say talking, you mean talking, not kissing and having sex. So um, certainly do pull back from that if you're not comfortable with this situation. Who cares what they expect? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, the man I've been seeing works so much, but doesn't make an effort to check in with me, even though I've asked. What do you mean an effort to check to check in? Um, by the way, they don't they don't need to, right? Uh, you want to be in a relationship with somebody who is a partner, not a child. If you're asking people to check in with you, that sounds more like parenting, a parent-child relationship. Okay, I'm gonna let you work all these hours, but you know, make sure twice a day you send me those text messages so that, um, so that I I feel like, uh, you know, you're thinking about me. Um. So. Uh. You know, people who work a lot, um, I don't mean, I don't hear from him for most of the week, okay? I only see him on, I see or hear from him once a week. So here's the thing, if if this is not okay with you, then don't pursue this, right? Don't pursue this. We don't get into relationships to change people. We choose the people who suit us. So this doesn't suit you. So walk away from this instead of trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Mad respect for inviting someone to go live that challenges your system. <laughs> Thank you. I was in a relationship that was toxic, been holding me back for three years. How do I get back out there? It's, it's, this is the manual, no more assholes is the manual for how to get back out there. Uh, it starts with reducing your stress and anxiety so that you're not you know, anxiously cho choosing a partner. You don't wanna choose a partner with that energy. You wanna choose somebody from a calm, confident place. So I get you fixing your energy. I get you fixing your brain. I get you fixing your thought patterns. I get you fixing your confidence levels, your self-esteem levels. I teach you how to date literally teach you how to approach, teach you how to write a dating profile, teach you how to use a no kissing for three months dating rule, why you want to use it, all the science behind it so that you can have an intelligent conversation about this, how to maintain those three months, how you can date other people during those three months. Um, really how to narrow it down to choosing the right partner. That's how you date. You don't go, okay, uh, I see you, you're on my radar, so I'm not going to look at anybody but you until they figure out that you're wrong for me. This bullshit, you're going to waste so much time. I don't want you to waste time. I want you to say, I see all of you and I'm going to pick the right one. That's what I want you to do. How do I find people? Go online, my love. Uh, if you're having trouble dating, come get coaching, come get coaching, right? Because like there's, you know, if, if your inner dialogue is so negative, right? So super negative, come get some coaching so that we can work on this and really get you out there and dating and talking to people and making things happen for yourself. Uh, 
I'm with someone who isn't ready for the commitment that I want, moving in and sleeping over. Uh, Ali Tree, how long have you guys been together for? Um, right? So, uh, how long, how long did you get to know each other for? How long, like, how long did you know each other before you had a first kiss? How long has it been since you had that first kiss? So, uh, if it's been at least a year since you had your first kiss, uh, it is logical to want to move forward, right? To start getting more. But, uh, if this relationship is still new, then, um, you know, it sounds like you didn't use a no kissing for three months dating, uh, rule and get to know who the person is and talk about goals and timelines before you kissed and started a relationship. My boyfriend has an ex and they are still talking, I guess. Or at least, I don't know, on social media. That's not a question. One and a half years? Yeah. So, you, Ali, you might want to have a conversation now where you say, you know, I've been doing some thinking about my life and this is when I want to get married. This is when I want to get engaged. This is when I want to move in. This is when I want to start having sleepovers. And, um, you know, I need somebody who's on the same path i need somebody who shares my goals and my timelines so is this you if it's not you that's okay I'm, I'm gonna be okay like this is not the right relationship for me but don't worry about me i'm gonna be okay i'm gonna find the person who suits me and matches my goals and timelines how do i get over the uncertainty of my relationship come get a coaching session So some people are like, what dating apps should I use? All of them, all of them, law of averages, you guys. So you're gonna catch the person who's jumping from one to another because they're like, oh, this one doesn't work. I've been through everybody. There's no one new, you know, they're, they're feeling disenchanted with that one. So they go try a different one. So when you get out there, go on all the dating apps so that you find the person who's jumping from one to another. Thank you, just need to find the confidence book recommendation for this. Uh, so we're talking about dating, so that would be no more assholes, 100% no more assholes. Do one of your books help with healing after an unhealthy relationship? Not ready to date yet, yes. Come back queen, come back queen. This is the book that helps you uh, through the heartbreak um, and really kind of guides you into uh, healing yourself, putting your heart back together after a breakup. So saying your timelines and questions, all the pieces are great, but still not attracted, walk away, give it some time right my my husband it took months for me to be attracted to him and that's a slow burn but mm, i'm so super attracted to him now because he's so sexy uh so you can give it some time right like like it doesn't need to be like <gasps> from the, from the beginning like this is again the no kissing for three months dating rule is a great opportunity to get to know somebody this this fallacy that we have that it needs to be this magical chemistry uh in the first date or within the first few dates or in the first week it's insane you guys like love does amazing things to your eyes when you get to know somebody and you realize they are everything you're looking for they are confident they are you know like self-sufficient they have their shit together they have integrity they are loyal people they're calm these are all very attractive traits when you stitch together enough attractive traits you start to feel attracted to that person but you need to get to know who they are before you can understand how attractive their traits are 
because I'm talking about men here when I talk about this, not guys. Guys are dazzling you because they don't want you to see how unattractive they are on the inside. So they, they're very flashy on the outside to try and attract you with all this sparkle and dazzle. Men don't do that. Men are very bland on the outside. The sparkle and the dazzle are inside of them, but they're not gonna show that to just anybody. You have to be worthy of seeing what's inside of them. They have to start to get to know you and understand that you have integrity. You've had, you have consistency. You have your shit together. You are a kind, patient, calm, confident person. And as they learn this is who you are, they show you more of themselves because they feel more confident about you. They feel more excited about you. They feel more attracted to you. So you really gotta understand there's a major difference between selfish short-term thinkers and generous long-term thinkers. And generous long-term thinkers are the diamond in the rough. And it will take time to develop chemistry with most of them. So give yourself time to get to know them three months and you may very well fall in love. And when you fall in love, ooh, that chemistry. Mm. Mm. Been using the three month rule, love it. Do you not avoid train wrecks? Love your content, thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, boyfriend won't use the word beautiful to describe me. He will only use cute, red flag. Why must you police his words so, um, right? You can't use that one. You have to use this one. If you don't use this one, then, um, you know, you're just, you're in big trouble. Uh, so does he have a stupid hang up? Yes, he does. Is it the end of the world? I don't know because I don't know if he's disrespectful or just deterred in any other way, right? Is, is this a hang up or is this him being a jerk? I don't know uh, because you haven't done a session. So I, 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 I can't do a deep dive. I can't figure out what other behaviors they are. I don't know if he's a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker. Yeah. You can look up the word cute in a dictionary, by the way. If you do that right now, tell us what it says. Been weeks since I left my narg. Gee, there are nights when it's over. <laughs> so funny. And not sure when to bring out the no kissing rule. He has not been pressuring. So before the end of the first of the fourth date, definitely before they move in for a kiss. So don't do it after they move in for a kiss. That's so unfair. You are literally rejecting them and that feels so shitty. And now they're gonna associate feeling shitty to you. That certainly doesn't work in your favor. Um, so you need to have this conversation before they move in for a kiss. Please get no more assholes so that you can properly have this conversation. Struggling to enjoy and have fun with my partner. That would take a coaching session in order for me to help you with that. Haven't dated since May 2019. I wonder when I will be ready. I don't know. If you're ready to be ready, you can come get a coaching session and I can help you understand how you can, you know, start getting that feeling to get out there. Going through a breakup and it hurts so much. Any advice to get through this? Yes, my love. I have a book for you. It is Comeback Queen. This is the book that helps you heal um, from a breakup. What's the funniest or cheesy pickup lines you've heard from a man? 
Um, gosh. Uh, we need to protect this woman. Thank you. Um, cheesiest pickup line. Cheesiest pickup line. I don't, I don't have any that stand out. I don't have any particular ones that stand out. Sorry. No particular ones that stand out. Holding hands and hugs is okay. I'm really shocked people hold out. I can't do that. Uh, holding hands and hugging is absolutely okay. There you go. That's disappointing. <laughs> How much time did you spend single in your adult life before meeting your husband? Uh, like none. Um, boys just didn't let me be single. Um, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm going through my, my dating history. Best book for a young woman of 22 and uh, no more assholes. I would say no more assholes. Um, yeah, so I was trying to be single before my first husband, um, but uh, he was insisting on me understanding that he was in love with me and wanted to be with me, and I gave in. Um, then I was with him, and while I was with him, I met my second husband. Um, and uh, so after leaving my first husband, I then got into a relationship with my second husband. So there wasn't uh, much of a gap at all. How to get over uncertainty in my relationship, like being afraid it isn't going to last, come get coaching. You're saying, how do I change how I think, my emotions, right? That's something I need to do a deep dive into. I don't have a quickie magic wand to answer for that that's going to um, get you through. You, you need a particular script, my love. You need me to understand where you came from, what created this mindset so that I can give you the words to undo this mindset and they will be particular to you. Do you recommend more time being fully single or is it okay to have no long gaps? So it's just life happens right like one thing my husband says you can't help who you fall in love with so sometimes life happens and you know people will come to me and say um oh i just went through a horrible breakup i i don't want to date i don't want to i don't want to like just i don't want anything and i say don't say that say i'm going to use a no kissing for three months dating rule i'm going to take the time to get to know somebody before choosing my next relationship you might meet somebody today. You don't need to say, I don't want anything to do with you. You can simply say, I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule. It's no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months because I want to make sure that when I get into my next relationship, I'm not just falling into a relationship. I'm getting into a relationship with somebody that I know and I know that they're good for me. I understand that they are the partner that I need. How do you deal with an ex who is very petty and emotionally mature and talks bad about you? Your favorite word needs to be whatever. Oh, he said that? Whatever. Oh, he did that? Whatever. Oh, he thinks that? Whatever. You need to use whatever. How many husbands do I have? Well, currently one. Would I ever want more than one at once? I don't think so. I'm pretty happy with just the one. He does a really good job. Um, and, you know, I kind of like my me time, so I don't think I can handle more than one husband at a time. Uh, 
<laughs> so he's like, could answer. Uh, Living with a man I've learned is a generous long-term thinker. Can we go from being friends with benefits to dating? You can try, but it doesn't mean he's going to want to. So you're going to say to him, hey, I've been doing some thinking and I really want to get into a committed and long-term relationship now because I feel like I'm ready to find that person that I'm going to get married to and buy a house with and have kids with one day. Whatever your fundamental values are, what needs to align with your future partner, that's what you say. And then you say, what about you? And you find out where they're at. So this person might not be looking for a relationship. If he doesn't want a relationship, doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter how much sex you have with them. Doesn't matter how convenient you are. That doesn't change their mind. So if you want a relationship and they don't want a relationship, the friends with benefits has to stop. <coughs> so you can go fine your relationship oh Chantel thank you so much been watching you for months I can't thank you enough for your time so much love mm -hmm. uh, oh you're not a mod anymore Fatima is that right um let's see add moderator there you go you're a mod now uh so guys i'm gonna head out my loves on my loves um if you want a notification next time i go live click my picture up here once or twice you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell um if you click that say i just did i have a bunch of free stuff for you in the link tree in my bio there's a free book button there's a free medit or there's a meditation resource button with a free guide in there there's also a long distance relationship guide that's a free download. So go grab those freebies to help yourself um, with whatever it is, your long distance relationship, or you want to start meditating, or the free book is Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. Yay, added you to notifications. Thank you, love hearing what you have to say, thank you. Do go follow me on Instagram. I do a coaching giveaway every single month. I give away a free one hour session. Thank you, just disappeared, <laughs> yes. Uh, need help with my boyfriend. If you guys need a coaching session, if you need some clarity, if you need some direction, come get a coaching session. It is worth its weight in gold. Um, you can find the button to that in the link tree in my bio. Men, my single men, we're my single men. I have a book for you. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but um, I have a dating book for men. It's called The Perfect Play. Here it is. So my men, if you are ready to get out and start dating and go find somebody like me, this is the book that is going to help you with that. 